So, hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. How are you feeling today? Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? I am always overjoyed to be in the house of God. Right now, Holy Spirit, we just, we welcome you and we thank you for being with us. We thank you that you are the one that makes the church the body of Christ. If you don't breathe on us, then we are not living. If you don't breathe on us, we are not vibrant. If you are not breathing on us, we are not thriving. And we thank you, we honor you, and we bless you, and we welcome you right now. I thank you, God, for every person that has put on their clothes, that got in their car, that got a ride, that decided, I want to be at church this morning. I want to be among the believers this morning. I thank you, God, that they come with open hearts and open spirits to hear what you are saying, Father. I thank you, God, that this is not a place where there are deaf ears or ears just desiring to be tickled, but there are hearts of mature believers that desire to receive the word of God, whether it's correction, whether it's encouraging, whatever you are saying in this season, that's what we want to hear. And we open our hearts to you and we thank you because you never forget us. We thank you that you never overlook us. We thank you, God, that you always go before us and you prepare a way and, and, and a path for us. And on that path, there is provision. On that path, there is peace. On that path, there is joy. On that path, there is breakthrough. Everything that we need because it's it's in you. So we thank you right now that you speak the word of life to us today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but my dependence is completely and totally on the Holy Spirit all the time. Why? Because I know how unqualified I am as a person. If you need a Bible, go ahead and raise your hand because we are going to go into the Bible. The baby wants a Bible. I know in, in all of us, in our own flesh, We are inadequate. Somebody say, in my flesh, flesh. I'm inadequate. So newsflash, don't feel bad about it. Stop saying, God, I'm inadequate. He knows how inadequate we are. That's why he sent Jesus. That's why he said, it is to your advantage that I go. And when I go, I will send the comforter. And who is the comforter? The comforter is the Holy Spirit. He's the one that reveals Jesus to us. He is the spirit of might. He is the spirit of strength. He is the one that comes to make us who God designed us to be. You can't do it on your own. Somebody say with me, I can't do it on my own. So stop being frustrated that you can't change yourself. You're not supposed to. Stop being frustrated that you can't make yourself holy. Stop being frustrated that you can't make yourself organized. Hello? Stop being frustrated because you cannot stop yourself from procrastinating. Stop being frustrated because every year you have your New Year's resolutions and you break them all before January 30th hits. Come on, hello? Y'all gonna help me this morning? But when we rely on the Holy Spirit and we stay in his face, he's the one that comes And he breaks the chains. He breaks the bad habits. He breaks the procrastination. He breaks the fear. He makes you the person that God always designed for you to be. He puts a spirit of boldness in you. He inspires you. He encourages you. He takes away the old doubt and puts in you the mind of Christ as you get in the word. So that's why we rely on him so much. Amen? Amen. So if you would go with me today, we're going to... I'm very much being... um, He's, he's interesting. He will give me times of teaching and we will go deep, but then there are days that he releases me from the subject matter. So next month, in the month of August, we are going to be going into talking about discipleship and evangelism. Okay? But today, that's not where we're going to start. We're going to kind of have a parenthesis. Somebody say a parenthesis in our teaching schedule. Okay? Because we are sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. There's a lot of changes and a lot of transitions that are, that are happening. But chapter 37 of Ezekiel. Go with me to Ezekiel 37. So we're in a parenthesis today. We're in a parenthesis. And God was dealing with me about the season that we're in as a church and as individuals. Holy Spirit, help me this morning. Help me this morning, Holy Spirit. Ezekiel 37. 37. 
and somebody somebody have a Bible on hand because I got two little people that unplugged my iPad last night and it didn't charge like it should have and I got 9% and that's what my Bible's on. So if I need if this goes dead and I need a Bible, be ready. Okay? So um, Ezekiel 37 says this, the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. Verse number two, and caused me to pass by them round about and behold there were very many in the open valley and lo they were very dry somebody say very dry you may have felt that you've been in a, in a season of dryness Okay, I got a witness in here. You may feel that you've come through a season of dry bones. You may feel like you're in a desert. You may feel like there's been sand blowing in your face and you're saying, God, when is this thing going to change? When is this thing going to adjust? When am I going to see something happening? This is the reason why it is the passion of the Father for us to get to know the Holy Spirit. Somebody say, get to know the Holy Spirit. Everything about my ministry, I can talk to you about worship. I can talk to you about evangelism. I can talk to you about prosperity. I can talk to you about everything that's in the word of God, but everything that I teach, some way, somehow, it's going to make its way back to the Holy Spirit. Why? Because he's the one that's active on the earth right now. See, Jesus is at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you so that your faith will not fail. He's up there praying for you, but the one that was sent to continue the work is the Holy Spirit. So, you're saying, okay, Holy Spirit, I'm getting to know you. Holy Spirit, I'm coming into relationship with you. Holy Spirit, I'm coming into an intimacy with you. Now I know that you're a person. Now I know that you're with me all the time. Now I know that I'm really not alone. Even when I feel like I'm alone, I'm not alone because you said that we will not be left orphans. You said that once you left, we would not be left alone. So I thank you for the Holy Spirit. But sometimes your life feels like a valley of dry bones. Let's be honest. Can I get a witness in here this morning? Sometimes you feel like you are in a valley of dry bones, but there are things that can adjust and that can change what you're seeing in that valley of dry bones. Amen? Amen. And this is what happened to the prophet. So he gets taken by the Spirit of the Lord. The, the New Testament also says that the Spirit of God took Jesus into the desert. We have to stop being afraid of the dry places. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We need to stop being intimidated by the desert. We need to stop being intimidated by the process. And when we come into a place of dryness, we have to start getting excited. Instead of complaining, you have to start getting excited and say, hold on a second. I was just in a green place. God has brought me into a desert place. I think there's a change coming. I think that there's a transition coming. I think there's a promotion coming. I think that there's favor coming. Because the only reason why God will take you into a place of dry bones is because he's getting ready to take you to another level. See, but we want the other level without the dry places. We want the next level without the process. We want to just say, I'm blessed and highly favored, and we want to be there. Not understanding that it's the dry place that fulfills in us the, 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 the structuring, the changing, the molding, the breaking. The, the, that potter really, really gets busy in the dry place in our lives. So the spirit of the Lord took the prophet Ezekiel to this valley of dry bones. It was full of dry bones. And it said that they were very, very dry. They were very, they weren't just dry. Okay. They were very dry. Verse three. And he said unto me, and he said unto me, son of man, can these bones live? See, God will take you into a place of a valley and he'll ask you, daughter, that dream and that vision that you thought was dead and you thought was dry, can it live? See, he, God doesn't ask a question if he doesn't know the answer. Amen. But he wants to know, do you know? Exactly. He wants to know, do you know what I'm thinking? Do you know what my answer is? And he says, son, can these bones live? Son, daughter, can your life go to the next level? Can your finances live? Can your relationships live? Can your vision and your dreams and your purpose, your ministry, everything that God has called for you, just because you got to take a step back does not mean that God is not with you. Just because, oh, oh my God, come on now. 
Sometimes we feel we don't want to be realistic about the process and we feel like if God ain't doing it and greater and greater and greater, sometimes to get to greater you got to diminish in order for you to expand. Yes. Sometimes you got to take a step back before you can take five steps forward. Yes. Why? Because sometimes we get ahead of God and we're moving so quickly that he's saying, come on, hold on, I, I got to pull you back a little bit. God asked him a question and he said, son, can these bones live? And I answered, oh Lord, thou knowest. He took the cheap way out. Okay, Lord, you know. But let's not respond to God when he comes to us in this season and says, can this situation live? Can this dry situation come to life again? I pray that at Rainfire Church, where we are as a people, we have a resounding yes for God. If you're in it, absolutely. God, if you're in it, then you will make provision. God, if you're in it, then you will make a way. God, if you're in it, you will show us the place where we need to go. God, if you're in it, you will bring the people that are supposed to serve. God, if you are in it, you will provide the finances that are needed. God, if you are in it, it doesn't matter if we have to take a step back to take a step forward. You know. You know. And again, again, he said unto me... And this is the part that is our responsibility in this season. I challenge you and I speak to you as a spiritual mother in this house. It is time for you to prophesy. Somebody say with me. It is time for me to speak over these dry bones. If you don't speak to them, they're going to stay dry. The Lord himself is standing with you in the midst of those dry bones. He's having a conversation with you about the dry bones. He's asking you a question and saying, can these dry bones live? And you may say, yes, Lord, you know, or you may say, yes, Lord, absolutely. But then he's going to turn it back on you and say, yes, but I'm going to need you to speak it. I'm going to need, see, because it's not in, God is everywhere. Yeah. God is in your house. God is in your bank account. God is in your marriage. God is in your friendships. God is in your relationship. God is everywhere. But if there is not a people that are having an ear to hear what he's saying and begin to dare to speak what he is telling you to speak and, and if we don't prophesy then those bones are just going to lay there. Do you hear me this morning? I'm always going to bring back the responsibility to what it is that we have to do. Because then that's when you feel empowered. That's when you realize I'm not a victim. I am a victor in Jesus Christ and I have power. So he says to him, to him, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, God, give us an ear to hear. Give us an ear to hear because God is having conversations with us about our dry places right now. And he's saying to you, yes, I need you to prophesy, but I don't need you to prophesy your own ideas. I don't need you to prophesy your own agenda. I don't need you to prophesy what you think is the right thing. He said, prophesy unto them and say unto them, prophesy upon these bones and say, uh, see, he's given you a script. Right. Follow the script. Somebody say, follow the script. Follow, the script. follow his script. He's saying, and say unto them, O oh, ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. The Lord himself is saying to Ezekiel what to speak to the bones. How amazing is that? That's why I keep trying to tell y'all, you don't have to figure it out by yourself. You don't have to try to, well, we're, so, we're such control freaks. And we want to know A and B and C and D and E and F and G. And I want to have a 10-year goal and a 5-year plan and a 2-week plan and a 20-minute plan. And everything has to go according to my plan. Because if not, we're going to have a problem. You don't even control how long you will be breathing. We don't have control of anything. We, don't, we didn't even have control if we were going to wake up this morning. And I'm not saying live a disorganized life. Yes, you organize yourself in the way that you best know how. But be flexible to the input of the Holy Spirit. Be flexible to the voice of God that says, okay, I know that you want to go this way. But if he's closing every door and you're not in sin. Yeah, that's right. Not in sin. If you're not in sin, like what do we talk about on Tuesday? We say, what, is, what hinders sin? Un, I mean, what hinders prayer? Unconfessed sin, unbelief, bitterness strife what was it praying outside of the will of God if it's not any of those things and God is still closing the door then that's when you have to say okay God show me the way he said the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord so if he's closing the doors 
There's a, there's a reason. But it's not our job to figure it out. He's giving him a script and he's saying, say to them, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and ye shall live. There is something about when the Holy Spirit blows upon you. Remember, let's go back to the New Testament. I mean, to the Old Testament. He formed the body of man. The form was there. The clay was formed. That's right. You may be in the valley of your dry bones and you, you've gotten far enough to prophesy and to speak what God is saying. And you see the form of that thing, but it yet has life in it. Right. That's the reason why it's not just knowing the Bible, knowing the scriptures, knowing the preachings without having the spirit. It's all death anyway. Right. You have to have the breath of the Holy Spirit. And, is, and God is saying to it. See, nothing has happened yet. But God is telling Ezekiel, this is what you need to say. This is how you need to prophesy. And make sure that you say that the Holy Spirit is going to blow upon these bones because that is what's going to make the difference. Right. And there's a process in that. Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you and will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and ye shall live and ye shall know that I am the Lord. This is all the script that God is giving the prophet. Amen. He's giving him word for word instruction on what to speak and what to prophesy. You have to get in that place with God that you begin to listen, hear, and write down the things that he is telling you, the plan that he has given you for your ministry, for your family, for your home, for your life. Write it down and say, God, what I've got, I'm standing in the middle of this valley of dry bones. What do you want me to speak? What do you want me to say? What is it that needs to happen? Because you know the beginning from the end. So what do I need to speak? What do I need to say? Give me the script so that I know what your plan is. See, there is no quicker way to get God to move on your behalf than for you to get an agreement with him. Yeah. When we bring our own plans, when we bring our own thoughts, when we bring our own agenda, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. But when we align ourselves with him and how can, see, as a pastor, I can't tell you how to align with God for your own life. Because each and every one of you has a specific purpose that God has given that is tailor-made. Somebody say tailor-made. Tailor it's tailor-made for you. So the best that I can do is I can give you the steps on how to get to him, on how to reach him, how to get sin out of your life, how to get to know him. I can give you the how-to, but you got to do the what. Amen. You have to put in the work. You have to build the relationship. I can sit up and give you counseling as a married couple and say, okay, husband, you need to treat your wife with respect. And wife, you need to treat your husband with respect. And husband, you need to help out every once in a while. And wife, you need to be more respectful and understanding. I can give you the advice, but if they don't go home and put into practice anything that I've told them, is there going to be a change? No. 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 So he's in the valley of dry bones. God gives him instruction right now. He is forming and giving me instruction on what to prophesy over Rainfire Church Amen. for where we're going and what it is that he wants to do. So he does all of that. And then on verse 7 it says, So I prophesied as I was commanded. I prophesied as I was commanded. God is bringing us to another place of faith and trust in him. Where we're able to hear and even see because you got to realize he's hearing the voice of God, but he's looking at dry bones. Right. He's looking at a very, very open valley that is full of dry bones. There is no life there. There is nothing there. There is nothing that is living in that place. And what he's hearing is the complete opposite of what he's seeing. Don't be afraid when you're seeing something that is completely opposite to what God is speaking to you. Do not be intimidated when what you're seeing is completely opposite to what you hear God saying. Either we're going to believe him or not. Amen. Either we're going to walk by faith or not. Amen. Either we're going to trust him and go all the way or not. Amen. Because if we're not, then, then what? Okay, we just, we're here, we die, and we go to heaven. Okay. 
I don't want to just be here and die and go to heaven. I want to do some things. I want to conquer some things. I want to establish some things in the kingdom of God. I want to change people's lives permanently. In the, so sometimes, many times, most of the time, I'm almost wanting to say all of the time when you choose to say, God, I'm going to get out the boat, what you're hearing and what you're seeing are going to be completely two different things. But he prophesied as he was commanded. I encourage you, prophesy as you are being commanded in this season. And as I prophesied, as I prophesied, there was a noise and behold, a shaking. There was a noise. See, what we don't, we, we want to see, when we begin to prophesy and when we begin to speak, we want to see things happen right there at that very moment. We don't know how to look with the eyes of the spirit and understand that when I begin to prophesy, when I begin to speak what the Lord has told me to speak over this valley of dry bones, even in the natural, if I don't see it with my eyes, I am not going to stop speaking and prophesying because in the spirit, things change first and then they change in the natural. Let me say that again. In the spirit, things change first, but then they change in the natural. So you see your son being rebellious. You see him going into the world. You see him cutting up and acting up and you got to begin to prophesy over those dry bones and say, in the name of Jesus, you are a man of God. In the name of Jesus, you will remain pure. And, and it seems like he starts getting worse. Uh-huh. It seems like he starts going off just a little bit more, right? Do you stop prophesying? No, you got to see him in the spirit the way you are prophet, the way God showed you. See, when my parents began to prophesy over me, I was cutting up. And I share these things with you because I don't want you ever to feel like, oh my God, Pastor Joanne is so perfect and she has it all together and that's why God uses her. Absolutely not. I'm as just as broken as anybody, but I choose to stay way far hidden deep in God so that I don't fall apart because he's the one that holds me together. He's the one that makes me holy. He's the one that gives me the wisdom and the strength. So I stay in him because without him, I'm a mess. Without him, we're all a mess. Amen. So when you prophesy, you may not immediately with your natural eyes see the change, but know that even as it says here in the scripture, as he prophesied, there was a no and there was a shaking. When you prophesy in the spirit, there begins to be a noise and there begins to be a shaking. Why is there a noise and there's a shaking? Because things are changing. Amen. Things are shifting. Things are happening. Even if you don't see it, it's happening. Here, he just had a visual of what it is that happens with us in the spirit so that we understand what it is that begins to happen when we prophesy according to what God has spoken. So I prophesied as I was commanded and as I prophesied there was a noise and behold a shaking and the bones came together bone to his bone the bones came together bone to his bone so imagine the shaking earthquake imagine the noise of the of the spirit beginning to move everything in that valley and suddenly the bones begin to connect every bone and it says not just every bone with a bone it's not every bone with a bone. It's every bone with his bone. Every bone with his bone. Which means when you begin to prophesy and when you begin to speak what God has said in this season, in every season, and God begins to blow and shake and the Spirit of God begins to blow and shake, he does not just put bones with bones. He doesn't connect the hand to the foot. He doesn't connect the knee to the ear. He begins to put the, what is it, elbow connected to the arm bone and the arm bone connected to the hand bone and the hand bone connected to the finger bone and the finger bone. He puts every bone where it belongs. God is not just going to put things together. He's going to put them together right. Amen. He's going to put them together in order. He's going to align them. What is it that the word of God says? That he'll make every crooked path straight. Amen. So you are frustrated because see, when you trying to put the bones together, you don't know how they go. Right. You don't know what bones are because they all look like bones to you. Okay, well, what bone? This bone looks the same as this bone. It's just this one's a little bit smaller than this one. They all look the same to me, but to God, they don't all look the same. God knows exactly where every bone is supposed to fit. He knows exactly where you're supposed to be, what you're supposed to be doing, how the vision that God has placed in you fits inside the kingdom. How you got to get moving on that vision that God placed in you because it's needed and it's necessary. It's not just about us just being, okay, 
okay, we're just rain fire church and we just going to be, if you're not being activated to do what you're called to do as an individual, then I'm failing as a mom. That's like me raising kids and they stay with me till they're 60 years old and they just sitting in the house. They not paying rent. They not helping. They're not doing, they just sitting up in the house, not even taking out the garbage. Uh Uh-uh, no. You got to get a job. You got to get up, you, you go, huh, get up out of here. Because I don't want no grown kids all up in my house. You understand what I'm saying? It's the same thing in church. If your grown kids are just sitting up in the house not doing nothing, something is wrong. There's a problem. But he knows, he knows how the vision that he's placed in you, how that bone fits the kingdom. And he put every bone with his bone. And when I beheld, when I looked, lo, the sinews and the flesh, so the tendons, the things that, so the bones came together, then the tendons, it's like, what was that one, um, that museum thing, what was it, bodies? Yeah. That they had the, the people's bodies, and you can see the muscles, and you can see the tendons, and you can see them, okay, imagine that. Imagine that the bones are coming together, every bone with this bone. The tendons are coming on. Suddenly the, the, the muscles are coming onto the bones. And then the flesh is coming onto the bones. I mean, this is a breathtaking. I mean, it sounds like a movie. It literally, but this is what Ezekiel is seeing with his own eyes. And skin covered them above. This is verse 8. So the sinews and the flesh came upon them and the skin covered them. And but, but, but there was no breath in them. There was no breath in them. And this is why I said in the beginning of the service, a constant, constant relying on the Holy Spirit is so very important because he's the breath of life. He's the one, we were sitting in here and talking on Friday night. There is no verse that I have spoken to you today that you probably have not seen before. You've probably read this before a hundred times. But it's only the Holy Spirit that can breathe upon a word and make it come into your spirit and cause you to feel like, yes, this is what I needed to hear today. It's only the Holy Spirit. We're not pulling, we're not creating new Bibles every Sunday. We're not creating a new, a, a new book of John or a book of Joanna. It's not. It's the same word that has been preached since Jesus died on the cross. It's the same word. But what is it that makes a word stand out to you? What is it that makes a word feel like, oh my God, I've never thought about it in this way. It's the Spirit of God. So you have this vast army of dry bones and this vision that has all now come together and it's ready. The bones are connected to the bones. The tendons are connected. The muscles are connected. Now even the skin has come upon the body. But guess what? If the Spirit of God does not breathe on it. See, you can't get halfway through the process. You can't get the plan of God. You can't prophesy over the dry bones. And all the dry bones start coming together. And then you say, oh, it's all come together. I can take it from here. (laughs) We do that. We do that. Okay, God, you gave me the plan. God, you told me what to, I heard you, God. I heard, I heard you, God. I heard you say, prophesy and begin this nonprofit. I heard you say, God, start this business. I I got my business plan. I'm ready to run. I'm ready. Why? Because as human beings, we always have a tendency to want to do it ourselves. There's a deposit of God that's on the inside of us. We're little gods. He's God with a big G, but we're God with a little G because we are sons of God. Do you understand what I'm saying? We're sons of God. That's why we have authority and we have power because we are sons of God. So we are minor, minute, little gods. He's the big God. We don't compare to him. But we're able to manifest what he manifests when we're connected to him. So there's this desire in us that makes us just want to be independent even from him. And that's the part that we, and, and, I, and I promise you, I'm not trying to be funny when I say this, but I believe this is one of the reasons why God in certain areas and in certain ways has handicapped me. He, I, I'm very much a one track focused person. I don't multitask well. I'm not able to do five things at the same time. If you're talking to me and I'm sending a text, you be guaranteed that I didn't hear a word you said. 
You understand what I'm saying? When I first got married, if I tried to scramble eggs and make bacon at the same time, something was going to burn. I've gotten a little bit better. But God has handicapped me in certain areas because if I had it all, if I, was, if I could sing, if I could play, if I was anointed, if I could bring a word, then I could organize, I can structure, I can do, if I could do it all, man, the arrogance and pride would be just through the roof and you would feel like you don't need anybody. You, because our, our nature wants to pull us to do it by ourselves. So we don't have to rely on anybody. But you know what? The body of Christ, it doesn't function like that. But at the same time, the vision that God has given you does not function like that. The purpose and the destiny that God has given you doesn't function like that. He can give you the plan. He can give you what to prophesy. He can give you the script. He can give you the A, B, C, D of everything. But guess what? There's going to come the moment where everything has come together, but you're still going to have to wait for the Holy Spirit to blow on that thing that has come together in the valley of dry bones. There's no other way. If not, if you try to activate that army, if you try to activate that vision, it's going to look like a zombie. Yes. It's going to be spooky mm -hmm. and it's going to be looking crazy because there's no true life in it because the life comes from the Holy Spirit. The life comes from the Holy Spirit. So what does it say? Verse 9, Then said he unto me, then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we call upon the wind of the Holy Spirit. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you would blow, that you would blow from the four corners, that you would blow from the north, the south, the east, and the west. We ask that you would blow upon Upon our visions, that you would blow upon the plan that you have set in place, that you would blow upon our lives, that you would blow upon our families, that you would blow upon our ministries, that you would blow upon everything that you have set our hands to do. God, we refuse to move, uh, move this army in our own strength, to move this vision in our own strength, but we prophesy as you have commanded, and we ask Holy Spirit that you would blow out everything that needs to be blown out, and that you would blow in everything that needs to be blown in. Give life to this vision. Give life to this church. Give life to the ministry. Give life to the call and the destiny that you have placed upon us in the name of Jesus we pray. Yes. 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 Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. So verse 10 says this. So I prophesied as he commanded me. And the breath came into them. So I prophesied. This is the second time he's having to prophesy according to the leading of God. The first one was to build the outer shell. The second one was to bring life into it. And let me tell you, in this walk with the Lord and in you fulfilling your purpose and your destiny, you got to stay connected to the Holy Spirit. And every day there has to be a Holy Spirit breathe on this thing. Holy Spirit, move it the way you want to move it. Holy Spirit, you breathe on the church. Holy Spirit, you breathe on my business. Holy Spirit, you breathe on my family, on my home, on my finances every day. Why? Because the dust of the garbage that is in the world and in our flesh and in our own selves gets in the way and it messes things up. But when the Holy Spirit begins to blow, that life stays fresh. Yes. If you have a pond where there's no water coming in and no water going on, that out, that pond begins to stink. And you get the flies. It starts to just, just be nasty. But when you got fresh water coming in and fresh water going out and that cycle continues, that water will remain clean. When the wind of the Spirit is blowing into your life, when it's blowing into your destiny and it's blowing out and it's blowing in and it's blowing out, you will not become a dead place. You, you will become a place that is a constant, a constant channel for life. Yes. And that's what you want in every area. You want life. Yes. Jesus came that you might have life yes. and have it more abundantly. So I prophesied as he commanded me. Verse 10, and the breath came into them and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Mm -hmm. They stood up on their feet. They're ready. Mm -hmm. Then he said unto me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried and our hope is lost. They've said, 
that that thing is going to die. They've said that you're not going to do it. They've said that you're not ever going to be great in the kingdom because of your past. They've said that our hope is lost. But what I have brought to life is the hope. What I have brought to life is the entire army that needs to be motivated and moved to do what I've called you to do in this season. They say our bones are dried and our hope is lost. That we are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, thus saith the Lord. Here we go again. He's prophesying again. Behold, O my people, I will open your graves. This is the Lord speaking to you this morning. I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves and shall put my spirit in you and ye shall live and I shall place you in your own land. Come on, somebody. Then shall ye know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it thus saith the Lord. So he's prophesying again and he's saying people have looked at us as a people and said our hope is lost. Everything is dead. Everything is gone. But you will know that I am the Lord when I have opened up the grave of every dead place in your life. When I speak to that thing that is in the grave. See, there are many visions and many dreams that go into the grave for a season and for a time. Don't be afraid. Because at the moment that God tells you to prophesy, at the moment that he tells you it's time for those bones to get up, at the moment that he tells you now is the moment to speak because you've had to go through some processes. Begin to speak, begin to prophesy. And he said, I will open up the graves and I will, my spirit will blow and I will bring you into your own. What? See, as African American people, as Hispanic people, as urban people, even some white people, you most of the time are living a life that is not your own. <laughs> You're not coming into a place that is your own. You don't have a business that's your own. That don't you, you don't have a ministry that's your own. You don't have a house that's your own. You don't have anything that's your own. But guess what? God can breathe upon you, breathe upon your life, breathe upon those dead bones and begin to prophesy over yourself. God, you're going to open up the grave. You're going to breathe the spirit upon me and I'm going to come into my own. For your glory. Amen. I'm going to come into my own. And everybody that looks at my life. They're going to remember what I looked like when I was in the grave. They're going to remember what I looked like when I was standing among all those dry bones. They're going to remember what I looked like when I was dusty in my process. Because I was in the desert. It's okay. They're going to remember. But they will be able to look and say. They will be able to look and say. The Lord has opened up his grave. The Lord has breathed upon her the Lord has brought them into their own and they'll be able to look and see that it's the Lord's doing yes. because for God to bring you into your own we can't think small right. That's right. something may begin small but it never stays small a child begins what as an egg and a sperm but it doesn't stay there it develops for nine months in the womb 40 weeks then it comes out and it continues to develop and it continues to grow that's why he said don't be afraid of small beginnings don't despise small beginnings because God is breathing on you God is showing you what to prophesy God is showing you what to speak speak every time he tells you to speak Amen. prophesy every time he tells you to prophesy make the plan and write it according to what he says and then speak when he tells you to speak. As many times as he tells you to speak. Because he has a covenant with us. And he's saying, if you love me the way I love you. If you devote yourself to me the way I devote myself to you. I will open up that grave. I will breathe on the dry bones that are in it. I will bring you into your own. When everybody has looked at you and said you were hopeless. And that you had nothing going for you. And they will be able to know that it was me. Close your Bibles. Oh, Holy Spirit. I just invite you to lift your hands right now. I invite you to lift your hands in the presence of the Holy Spirit right now. I invite you to lift your hands and lift your heart to Him right now. He is always shifting and He's always adjusting. But Father, I thank you right now for an alignment of hearing. I thank you, Father God, that you're opening our ears to hear your plan 
Yes, changes are here. They're not just coming, but changes are here. In our personal lives, as a church, as a body, as a family, change is here and it's now. And we're not afraid. We're not afraid of the valley. We're not afraid of the dry bones. We're not afraid of what things may look like in the natural. No, sir. Because we understand that this is a moment of promotion. We understand that this is a moment of shifting and it's a moment of change. And we thank you for that. We thank you, God, that you think of us enough. You think enough of us to lead us by your spirit into the valley of dry bones. We thank you, God, that you go with us. We thank you that we have an open ear to hear your voice and you are telling us what we are supposed to prophesy, what we are supposed to speak. And we will be faithful to speak it. Father God, we, Father God, bury our own will right now in the name of Jesus. We bury our own plan. We bury our own desires. We bury our own motivation, oh God. We bury it. We bury it and we bury it deep. We don't want that to live. But we want your plan to live. We want your thoughts to live. We want your kingdom agenda to live through this church, through our lives, through our businesses, through our ministries, through our families, through our homes, everything that we place our hands to, God. We want to be able to speak over it, prophesy what you have spoken, and we need your spirit to blow on it. We need your spirit to blow on us. And we thank you, God, because you're doing it. And we yield to you and we yield to the moving of your spirit. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Come on. Thank God for this new season. Thank God for this new season. Thank God that the bones are not going to stay dry. Thank God that the bones are not going to stay dry. Thank God that he is going to give you the prophetic word to speak. And even as a pastor, I speak prophetically. And I thank you, Father, right now. I prophesy to that new location that you will be found in this week. I thank you, Father God, that you are going before us and you're opening the way. God, I thank you right now and I prophesy for provision in that transition. Father, I thank you, God, that you will lead us exactly where you need us to be. God, I thank you and I prophesy that you continue to bring those that are called to be a part of this church body. God, I thank you, God, that those that are called to be leadership in in this body, that you continue to place it on their hearts and on their souls. God, that they would not be able to get away from it. I thank you, God, that you are depositing a spirit of prayer and fasting and passion and love for you in each and every one of us. I prophesy, Father God, that there is no lack in us, Father God, because there is no disobedience, there is no rebellion, and there is no sin. And we are givers, we are sowers, we are tithers, Father God. I prophesy and I speak life. God, that not one person in this house is going to be a bench warmer, but every person in their season and in their moment will be activated to walk out the call and the destiny of God, whatever it may be, feeding the homeless, outreach ministries, uh, going into the world and preaching the gospel, people that are called to be promoters, people that are called to be professional psalmists and worship leaders, people that are called to start their own churches in other locations and in other cities, people, Father God, that are called, Father God, to own businesses, Father God, consultation businesses, book businesses, publishing, music, whatever it is that you've called, I prophesy and I declare Father God, that Rainfire Church will be an an incubator, an incubator of vision, of destiny, and of purpose. An incubator of destiny, vision, and purpose. An incubator of destiny, vision, and purpose. Where you're warm enough and you're fed enough to be able to hatch. And once you hatch, then it's time to start growing because the moment is going to come where you're going to have to spread your wings. And if I have to kick you out the nest, I'm going to do it. Because you all have to fly in your own way. You all have to fly in your own way. Amen? Amen. I love you. I love you. With all my heart, I love you. Let's prepare our tithe and our offering before the Lord.